Hi everyone, my name is Coach John and I am a personal trainer that makes YouTube videos on health and fitness. Now you must be wondering what is a personal trainer doing a DIY for a filter adapter uh, on a smartphone, especially on the uh, Sony Xperia Pro i. Well, because I use Sony uh, digital cameras, mirrorless cameras, and smartphones to produce a lot of my content. When I want to do video outdoors in bright conditions, uh, especially during my uh, hiking vlogs or similar outdoor type vlogs, an issue that I experience is, of course, overexposure of my videos. On the majority of smartphones, you can't control the aperture to uh, reduce that overexposure. Now, the phone that I use, the Sony Xperia Pro i, does have two variable apertures, a 2.0 and a 4.0. But even when I stop it down to 4.0, my videos are still overexposed. So I tried to look for uh, filter adapters. If you use an ND filter or a CPL, polarizing type filter, they can help control that bright light and allow you to shoot at that 150th or 160th that most people use for uh, videos. Now the Sony Xperia Pro i is a niche phone. I uh, hope I said that correctly. Meaning it's made for a specific type of audience. It's not built on a uh, significant level like other phones such as those by Samsung and Apple. So it makes it very hard to find accessories for this phone. I've tried to find ND filters or filter adapters for this and I just couldn't do it. So I decided to make my own. I wanted to keep it affordable and simple to make. So I have a polarizing filter for uh, one of my Sony lens, a 35 millimeter. I just grabbed the old case that I had. It's supposed to be an iMac case, but I think it's a fake. <laughs> Long story, but uh, it's not an iMac case. And I decided to use uh, this one for the uh, filter adapter. I'm using the original Sony case for the Xperia Pro i. Uh, but it's not very good for uh, filming. This phone will overheat quickly when using this case. And there are some modifications I made to this one to help with that uh, overheating. I grabbed a filter adapter. So this is a 43 to 49 millimeter filter adapter. As we can see here, this is where the opening of the camera is gonna go. Uh, it does cover that main sensor very well and I only use the main sensor for my vlogs because of course it's the best one but also it's in 24 millimeter and that's why I use it and I'm going to use some all-purpose epoxy to glue this filter to the case now if you notice here uh, on the side of this case it normally look like this but I cut this part out because I wanted access to the shutter button I found out that when you cover this shutter button with different cases, it gets rid of that tactile feel that I like when taking a photo. I just find that keeping this area open tends to keep the phone a little bit cooler. I also cut out this part for the lanyard. Before it was a hole, but now my lanyard can just slip through uh, this part here. If you want to do this to your case where you want access to the side buttons and you want more ventilation, you're going to need some type of uh, blade like this. And this worked very well for cutting through the plastic and uh, rubber here. So you can see when I take the Sony Xperia Pro I and I put it into this case, the buttons are all exposed. I have easy access to my shutter button. The lanyard here on the side is, is able to just move freely. Some people may mock lanyards on phones, but they were standard issue a few years ago. And the problem is I have dropped every single phone I've owned. And actually I've probably dropped this phone three times and probably another 10 almost falls, but good thing I had the lanyard and I was able to catch the lanyard in time uh, before it actually uh, fell down. This case is good because it protects the corners here, I've discovered that when this phone falls, it will fall on a corner first and then fall flat either on the front or the back. So it's good to find a case with these uh, corner protectors. I don't trust the ones on the Sony uh, because it has this wide gap here. 
But this case doesn't feel as tight as this one when you put it on. This one feels very tight. So I trust this case more when it comes to uh, potential falls. Now what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna remove the phone and I'm just going to glue on this adapter. All right, so it looks like this particular epoxy kit does come with a stirrer and a piece to stir the epoxy together. It's very easy to do this. You'll just unscrew it, pop this plastic covering here. And you will just place uh, an equal amount of epoxy. Of course, the desired amount you need to get that ring on. I'm just gonna guess here. Basically mix it together until it's a uniform color. This adapter has a raised edge here and I'm gonna try to glue that first and see if it sticks. If it doesn't stick, then I'm gonna go ahead and apply the epoxy all over here and then stick it here onto the case. I'm thinking this will give me a better seal too against excess light, but I will try this first. Now, remember everyone, this is a this is permanent, so use a case that you don't really care about. If my breathing sounds funny, I think I have the virus again. So I'm just trying to get over it right now. I just wanna make sure that the glue is strong enough so that the filter doesn't fall off uh, while I'm doing hikes or some kind of other rough physical activity. Also, this is what I forgot to point out earlier, but if you're going to put a filter and the adapter here for the back of the main camera, it's gonna cover up the external microphone on the back. Now I use a lav or an external microphone for my sound recording, so this isn't a priority for me, but if you still need to use this one, then you might have to find some other way to get the adapter and the filter on there without blocking this, but I think that's gonna be very hard. Now you're gonna see also that once I put this on, Access to the ultra wide and the telephoto camera is going to be pretty useless. It seems like this is not going to work. I think the surface area is not large enough to put this on here properly. It's not even sticking, but what I can do is, let's see if I can make a groove here and add more epoxy. So yeah, it's not gonna look pretty. You may have a better way of gluing this on, uh, maybe a more secure way, and you can make it look nice. But for me, I just want something that gets the job done. Nothing pretty, that's why I'm using an old case. Okay, I think it just needed a little bit more. All right, so that's what it's gonna look like. I'm gonna let it dry for 24 hours, and then uh, come back and let's see if it held up or not. It's been about 24 hours and the lens adapter is finished drying on the phone case. And this is how it looks like. Now, if you notice, the epoxy dried into a peach color. I only did this so I could show you where I applied the epoxy. They do sell clear epoxies that you can buy uh, and you won't see uh, this type of coloring. Now what I'm probably gonna do is just paint it black so it gets rid of that color. Now what I did do, because I felt that what I had done yesterday wasn't enough, I actually filled in some epoxy here on the edge where there was a gap and that should hopefully reinforce the lens holder to the case a little bit more. And the way I did that was I just took a syringe I just stuck the epoxy in here and squeeze the epoxy out right through the hole here and it was good size to fill in the gap here around the edge of the ring now what does it look like with the filter on I'll use a 49 millimeter CPL filter just screw it on oh, okay try to screw it on And there we go. That's how it looks.
Now let's go ahead and put my phone inside. And this is what it looks like with the phone. You can see the main camera sensor, the 24 millimeter. You can see the flash and the tiny sensor that measures the uh, distance to the object you're taking a picture of. The telephoto camera is completely used up. Also the mono microphone on the left side is also covered up. Now how durable is this? Well, I don't know. This is not a durability test, but when I move it and I shake it and it seems pretty secure on there. Actually, the only noise I hear is the, the filter itself. There's some play in the filter, but of course I'm going to take it out and I'm going to test it. And uh, if there are some issues, I'll make another video uh, talking about its durability. This is going to make a good vlogging camera. One of the, the strengths of the uh, Sony Xperia Pro I is it, it's a very excellent lightweight vlogging camera compared to something like my uh, Sony ZV-E10. If I throw on that Sigma 24 millimeter and I try to hold it out and vlog, it's pretty heavy. And then you throw on the microphone too. Yeah, it's not good. So I'm happy that I'm able to do this now. I can also put an ND filter on here. So hopefully my videos will be better. Next thing I'm gonna do is just uh, take it out for some test video, see how it performs. But gotta wait for the sun to come out. It's nighttime now. <laughs> After I finished my DIY lens holder for my phone, I was all set to get some footage and then this happened. But it rained non-stop for about two and a half days. When the rain finally stopped and I was able to go out and get some footage, I kept getting overheating warnings. So this would happen just after a minute or two of taking photos or videos. I believe the case is the reason why this phone is overheating. I finally found some time to come out and test out my DIY uh, lens holder project. So right now I'm filming this without any type of filter. The shutter speed is at 148, uh, the aperture is f4.0, and the ISO is 100. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put on the 49mm CPL filter that I have for one of my Sony lens. Okay, so here is the 49mm CPL filter installed on the lens holder. I don't know how it looks because I don't have the vlog monitor for this phone, so I'm shooting it blind. So I'm not gonna know until I get back to my computer to check these files and see how they are. But hopefully there is an improvement in the contrast and the clarity and maybe not so overexposed as before. I mentioned earlier in this video that the 16 millimeter ultra wide was usable when I was installing the lens adapter but as you can see now part of it is usable so for sure the telephoto lens uh, can't be used because the lens adapter is covering it up for now just the 24 millimeter lens can be used with this setup that's it everyone for this tutorial on how i made a filter adapter for a smartphone case for the sony xperia pro i <laughs> So hopefully you get some ideas from what I did. I am working on a lengthy Sony Xperia Pro I review, mainly on the camera and video features and my experience using them, creating content for my uh, YouTube channel. So hopefully that will come out in a couple of months. All right, please hit that like button so that this video can be shared with others and they can make their own uh, lens adapter for ND or CPL type filters. See you all later.